just my imagination. This is Florida Frontiers. Before gaining national recognition on the TV show I Love Lucy, Desi Arnaz was a very popular musician in Miami. Holly Baker has more. Lucy, I'm home. Generations of television viewers recognized that famous greeting by Ricky Ricardo in the popular I Love Lucy show that aired from 1951 to 1957. Before he brought Ricky Ricardo to life, Cuban-born Desi Arnaz was a musician known as Miami's own conga king. In 1937, he ignited the conga dance craze in Miami Beach at the Park Central Hotel, located at 640 Ocean Drive. Florida native Gary McKechnie is a writer, speaker, and the organizer of the Desi Arnaz historical marker to be placed at the Park Central Hotel, the place where he introduced America to the conga craze. Desi and his father, they're allowed to leave Cuba, miraculously, in 1934, and they land in Key West, and the mother stays back in Cuba. She joins them later. Here you go. You've got this kid about 16 years old coming to America, but he really doesn't understand the culture. He doesn't really understand the language, and he's trying to make his way. His father and he go from Key West to Miami. All of a sudden, they're looking for work. What do we do? Fortunately, there were some other refugees in the city, someone who knew his father, So through that connection, Desi was able to enroll at St. Patrick's uh, Catholic High School in Miami, and he's starting to learn English. He's starting to assimilate in the culture, but it was no longer his father as a powerful politician. It was no longer his father as a doctor. It was his father as a manual laborer. And the incredible thing is his father had this attitude, and I think a lot of Desi's success comes from his dad. No matter how bad things were, he was always saying, there has to be a way. There has to be a way. That was his mantra. And anytime something would go wrong, his father would think there has to be a way and figure it out. And that was just planted in Desi's mind. When they arrived from Cuba, Desi Arnaz helped his father lay tile in Miami Beach homes. He worked at Woolworths and even had a job cleaning canary cages for 25 cents a cage. After finishing high school, Desi Arnaz, a musician at heart, found a way to make money through his love for music. In 1937, he performed the song Bubaloo during an audition to be a singing guitarist at the Roney Plaza Hotel. Latin band leader Xavier Cugat heard the audition, hired Desi Arnaz as a vocalist, and brought him on tour. Desi Arnaz eventually left Cugat's orchestra and struck out on his own. He went to Park Central Hotel in Miami Beach looking for a job. There he met Bobby Kelly, son of entrepreneurial restaurateur Mother Kelly, who was opening a 200-seat nightclub as an addition to the brand new Park Central Hotel. Advertising himself as Cugat's star performer and promising to bring along an orchestra, Desi was hired for a two-week engagement. Unfortunately, at his debut, it was obvious that his orchestra was really just a handful of musicians who couldn't play the Latin music that Arnaz had promised. What he ends up with is like five musicians, none of which know Latin music, none of which have any Latin instruments. It's like a saxophone player, (laughs) a piano player, a guy with a double bass, you know, no marimbas, no maracas no guitars. It's just like, oh my God, Desi's thinking, what do I do with this? So they go and they have a quick rehearsal, like a two hour rehearsal. And they go to the club that night and they're wearing ruffled sleeves and they're dressed Latin, but they just don't know any Latin music. So they play their first set and they're horrible. And Desi Arnaz is thinking, I'm never going to get a job ever. Now, keep in mind, he's 20 years old. And he's leading a band for the first time. (laughs) He's thinking, this is it. I'm done for. So Desi thinks there has to be a way. And he gets the band together and he goes behind the bar and he gets a bottle of Bacardi rum. And he said, it's the first and only time he's done this. He let his band get drunk. And what he was doing, he was thinking about Santiago, Cuba in a dance called the conga. And he said this would be these huge breakout parties that would go from one village to the next, to the next, to the next city. And it would just be this procession 
of people who were totally hypnotized by the conga rhythm, that dun, 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 dun. And he said it would go from dawn to dusk. And he's thinking, hey, these guys can't play Latin music, but certainly they can play a conga beat. Desi Arnaz strapped on his conga drum and taught the orchestra the rhythm. Improvising the scene, they started playing the conga beat. Arnaz created a conga line that snaked around the dance floor and continued out into the streets. All of a sudden, just like in Cuba, everybody is hypnotized by this. Desi's now really getting into it. His musicians are getting into it. Everybody is, it's like a rapture. And he walks out the door and he's banging his drum and the musicians are with him. And people start walking down or marching, literally, down Ocean Drive. And Desi's leading the way with his conga drum and musicians back into the bar. And people were just exhausted and exhilarated. And Bobby Kelly goes, hey, I want to extend your contract. <laughs> you know, it was, it was this moment. Desi said the conga was his dance of desperation because he had no other outlet. He had no other way to get the crowd on his side. So he goes back the next night and he does it. And crowds just start building and building. All of a sudden, Desi is now the 20-year-old king of the conga. And they call the nightclub La Conga. They were going to call it Desi's Place. He said, no, call it La Conga. To land in Miami in 1934, hardly knowing the language, sleeping in a warehouse, to four years later, you're the toast of Miami, you're the king of the conga. And that sort of initiative is just so admirable. Desi Arnaz also played at the Roney Plaza Hotel, the Clay Hotel, and other local venues. But based on his autobiography... The Park Central Hotel was where he had his dance of desperation that started the conga craze in America. The publicity that followed raised his profile and led him first to Broadway and then to Hollywood, where he met the love of his life, Lucille Ball. That's why it's the ideal location for a historical marker dedicated to Desi Arnaz. Gary McKechnie. I read for probably the third time Desi Arnaz's autobiography earlier this year. And it's, it's called a book and it's hard to get. It's out of print now, but I keep a copy around and I read it every time I need inspiration in, you know, a good laugh and a good Hollywood story, a good show business story, a good, really a good American story. And when I read that and I read the part about him in Miami Beach, I thought they're doing documentaries now and docudramas about Lucille Ball. There's fan clubs for Lucy and deservedly so. And there's a museum, the Comedy Museum in Jamestown, New York, pretty much dedicated to Lucy. And I realized there's no real recognition for Desi Arnaz. And then I remembered having written for Visit Florida and having written a few articles about the Florida Historic Marker Program. I thought, why isn't there a tribute to Desi Arnaz? So I thought, well, because nobody's done it, I should do it. This guy, he's too good of an American, too good of a person not to honor, not to remember. The fan-funded project to obtain a historical marker for Desi Arnaz at the location of the former Park Central Hotel, now known as the Gabriel, is supported by the Arnaz family and the city of Miami. Gary McKechnie created two websites where people can learn more about Desi Arnaz and contribute to the fundraiser for the historical marker. I bought two websites, thankyoudesiarnaz.com and graciasdesiarnaz.com because like the sign, the websites are in English and Spanish. So the sign will be in English on one side and Spanish on the other. So everyone will be able to um, understand why we owe a debt of gratitude to Desi Arnaz. Think of how much enjoyment and laughter that man in Lucille Ball created. And if you go to thankyoudesiarnaz.com, there's links to GoFundMe where you can pitch in five, ten, twenty dollars and play a role in this. And anything in excess of $2,500 would go toward programs that help Cuban refugees in Miami or assist maybe English as a second language, just helping the community so his legacy will live on. On the day that the historical marker will be placed at 640 Ocean Drive, Gary McKechnie hopes there'll be a huge celebration in Desi Arnaz's honor with a conga line, celebrity guests, musicians, and even Lucy and Ricky Ricardo costume contests. The historical marker will be a heartfelt tribute to Miami's conga king and one of America's most beloved stars. 
aside from a few blocks of concrete on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, there's a real absence of tributes to Desi Arnaz. You know, there's absolutely no downside to this. And that's why I'm so thrilled because I was looking for a positive outlet, something to uh, focus on. The pandemic has knocked the wind out of a lot of us. And the news seems bad almost every day. And it's just nice to shift gears and create a positive project that will be there to recognize someone that we all can admire. If you'd like to take part in this historic tribute to Desi Arnaz, visit thankyoudesiarnaz.com or graciasdesiarnaz.com, where you can read his story and make a donation. For Florida Frontiers, I'm Holly Baker, Public History Coordinator for the Florida Historical Society and Archivist at the Library of Florida History in Coco. You've been listening to Florida Frontiers, the weekly radio magazine of the Florida Historical Society. Please join us right here again next week. You can also listen.